G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Well, good day, viewers, and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we're in Melbourne again, and with a very delightful young lady, Donna Rakavillis. Thank you. Welcome to the show. And Donna's a very interesting artist. So when I first saw her work, I thought, this is fantastic, because part of what I feel art is all about is about making a social statement, and Donna does that in a number of ways. She uh, is very involved in the preservation, the conservation of the beautiful, particularly whales and the ocean, but you actually use a lot of materials that you find on the beaches and she puts together really fantastic pieces, particularly with the eyes in the animals that she actually does, whether it be whales or squids or turtles. But you actually use resins and old bits of material that you find on the beaches. And I love the word that you use and you call it upcycling. Yeah, definitely. Instead of recycling, it's upcycling. Yeah, it's giving it a second chance in life. That's a know? fantastic way to look at it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do a dragonfly. Mm -hmm. And you use a whole bunch of different things as well. I mean, your husband's involved in the automotive industry as well. Yes, yes. So he's got little bits and pieces of metal and stuff that he uses. And then yes. Donna obviously upcycles and reuses all this stuff yes. again in her pictures. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to let you have a start. Now, what I can see here is you've actually drawn yep. out a, uh, a little plan. Yeah, a little <laughs> plan. But I love the colours in Donna's work. I mean, this stuff is just great. Down here, you've actually used a. Um, oh yeah. Uh, it was sort of something nearly burnt the house down. <laughs> yeah. You've got a, uh, a blown out fuse and also a plug that goes into it. Yeah. And that's going to be the end of the tail. But you're yeah. going to put bits and pieces together. I think yeah. these are the eyes right here, aren't they? Yeah, that's one of the eyes. They're yep. really fantastic. It's just so cool. But let's let you make a start on this and okay. then we'll sit back. And then I want to, I want to discuss some other things around sure. as well. Which yeah. is an interesting story behind that. Yeah. But let's get stuck into it. Okay, Donna, mm -hmm. now I can see that you've actually put your baseline drawings down there yep. and you've got an acrylic cover and these really amazing little bits of metal on the side that we'll discuss yep, later on. It's very yep. cool. Where do you go now? I mean, I can see that you use acrylics as well, but what do you do from here to get this, get this picture started? Well, I get my baseline on the canvas first of all. So in this picture, I wanted to do a dragonfly. So I've drawn him up in my grey lead. I've just quickly given it a rough idea of where I want the eyes. And then I've got my base coat of acrylic underneath it and I high gloss it with an Atelier gloss. Uh -huh. um, just so that if I do make a mistake, I can just wipe it off and it's just nice and easy. And I can see by your technique as well, is that you're very, very bold. I think it was Carol yeah. Foster that said, give me that little brush and you yeah. basically picked up a, a palette knife and you've been getting larger and larger ever yeah. since. Yeah, well, it started off with a little brush, <laughs> a little tiny brush, and she took it out of my hands and gave me this little palette knife. <laughs> and now I use the big palette knife. So yeah, it's definitely a confidence thing. You definitely grow with confidence as you, as you continue to paint. That's fantastic. All right, well, let's put some color down there. Okay. Okay. So I'm starting off with an Atelier um, Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber, yeah. Yeah, just something there. really simple. Um, straight out, of the, out yep. of the container, straight onto the canvas. And I use a really rough old brush because I don't want it to be perfect. What was the day that you realised that you wanted to use bits and pieces of material to put all this together and to start making these social comments about your work? How did, how did that come about? Well, it started probably in high school, I'd say. My um, art teacher then encouraged me to just go with whatever I was feeling and I definitely wanted to do three-dimensional art and so um, I did a giant big eyeball with big eyelashes coming out and um, she told me probably not the best idea to use 
um, metal, silicon and plaster I think it was at the time and I was a stubborn teenager and I didn't want to listen. <laughs> so I combined them all and I did this big painting and um, yeah, it, it ended up coming a draw or first a draw with um, another student in um, the high school art show that was on. Uh -huh. It was actually judged by Joan Kerner then. Okay. Yeah, she was so lovely. She was very encouraging and she sort of said to me, you know, I love what you're doing with this 3D stuff and you should continue it on. And so I sort of never really thought of it as an option until she said it. it didn't really click to me that it would be an option. So I'll go from there and then add some colour. Sure. Yep. So just scooping it straight out of there, eh? I <laughs> sure am. I love, that's what I love about Atelier. It's so nice and thick. Yeah. You can just apply it so easily, even on a canvas that's upstanding. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice and easy that way. So that's it for the green. So next colour will be purples. I just want a little bit of a little bit of white in that colour, just to bring out a bit of vibrance. So a lot of the paintings that you create as well, you use luminescent colours in them. Well recently I did one called The Secret Garden. Uh -huh. It was green during the day and then electric green um, when the black light would come on. It's like a little bit of a private painting as well so either only they know or they can leave it on when they've got guests and yes. it's a little bit of fun. That's cool. Are there any influences at all that you find from because I'm sort of, I'm looking at this and I'm going pro heart, sort of sneaking around in the back of your head somewhere. <laughs> but were there any influences as far as art was concerned that, that brought you to where you are now? I like to look at all artists and all their work and pick apart what my, I might be able to use in my work. But um, I mean, Carol Foster was a big, um, a big influence in my life. Taking that brush out of my hands was huge because <laughs> I now use the majority with just the palette knife, which sure. is so much more freeing and so much more fun. And when I do classes with the kids, I love to give them this and show them what I've been taught, you know, mm -hmm. that, that it's, it's something that really gives you that freedom. Just looking at that green, I'm not really happy with the... Too dark? Yeah, I just okay. wouldn't mind a bit of, a little bit of colour and I'll mix it straight on the canvas that way. It's How about that? <laughs> It just looks so much more the part now. Yeah. And even leaving a bit of the background too. When was the catalyst that came to you and said, this is what I want to do, this is, this is the statement I want to make? There must have been a moment that that happened. I think I was always searching for what it is that made set me apart and made me different from the other artists. I did realise it was always there and it was always the environment. I was always passionate about animals, about helping you know, young ones have esteem through work. And that was really the catalyst, I think, is combining all of those things and then having fun in the art. So when I do a piece, it's environmental, but it's also to the eye, aesthetically, it's bright and it's vibrant and it's happy. So even though it's a sad note that, yeah, we're using plastic bags and they're doing damage to the environment, the picture itself can still make somebody smile when they walk into the room. And that's my intention. If I can get somebody to smile when they walk into the room, I feel like I've done my job as an artist. Fantastic. So I'm just gonna add a bit of white to that blue, straight on the canvas again, just to give it a bit of color. Well, this is my favorite color. Very, very it's just, indulgent. I love it, it's just so beautiful. You can just really have fun with it and just go all out and use that color beautiful. and encourage it to come out more. So I'm just going to start with the head and this usually can either work or not so I'll just mould it as I go. So um, I'll start off sort of giving it the top of the crown of the head there, nice and thick so we don't see any canvas at the back. Just a lovely layered on. Yeah. Now in the process of your journey on putting all these together, mm -hmm. um, you know what type of materials have you run across that help you? with the sculpture aspect of your work? Well, with the signatures, I'm always, I'm always on the lookout for a piece. I'll collect whatever I can find. Some of the times I'll find something that's more of an environmental message that I want to give. For instance, the one that I just recently did, I went um, to Port Arlington and I found lots of rope littered everywhere. There's this beautiful green rope. And then I went to Werribee South for a walk and I found more of that green rope, even in Werribee South. So it must be all the way through the bay. And things like that really make me motivated to give a message that that's not acceptable um, and that it needs to it needs to be shown, you know, of what is actually going on out there. So those sort of things are definitely a trigger to what I, what I use in my work. 
I did actually put that rope into a, a, a painting, and which is now in William Street in one of the business districts in a boardroom. Yeah, for, for everybody to see and hear the message as well. So fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, plus the fact that you um, you help teaching children as well. Yeah. And then delivering that message, and I think it's very powerful the fact that you use art and the environment to deliver that message, particularly with the kids. Yeah, definitely. Look, it's it's such an esteem builder. It can be for the kids, you know, and. And if we give them the opportunity to express themselves and, and just the way they want to express themselves, you know, they might want to stick things on the canvas or they might want to do things that are 3D, let them go. That's my, that's my encouragement, you know. I think sometimes we're so structured, with, you know, with the way we, we teach that we forget to let them just be themselves mm -hmm. and find their own passion, you know, because there is a passion there and there's something, there's something underlying. They've just got to work out what it is. I hear so many people, even adults, say to me um, when I speak to them about art, um, I don't have you know, a creative bone in my body and that's just not true because every time they put an outfit on, every time they, you know, they put their makeup on or whatever it might be, um, this is creative, you know, it's, it's a form of creation, it's, it's all a part of that process. So yeah, I like changing people's perspective on that, absolutely. Good job, well said. Okay. So I'll just quickly sketch some wings in there. The stainless steel edges on this picture, and it's just a fantastically novel way to produce a painting, yeah. were actually created by your younger brother, yeah. who you only met a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah, so um, I found out that I had a, another brother, which um, yeah, my other family members knew about, but I didn't, and I'd actually forgotten about it. Um, I did know many years ago, and had met him when he was a baby, but I'd forgotten about that interaction. And um, years later, one of my sisters mentioned that he liked my work, and I said, sorry, who? And they said, it was your brother. And I said, I, I don't have another brother. I've got brothers, but I didn't know that I had this brother. Um, and so it was a real surprise to me to, to finally meet him. He finally agreed to meet me, and we're inseparable. <laughs> we're inseparable. We're very similar in personality. Um, I love all my brothers, um, but it's really, it's really cool that we get to work um, together with some the wings here. And I got him to commission these, hoping that he might want to do some artwork. I try to push all my siblings into it. <laughs> but it's a fascinating. I mean, I just think it's a fascinating approach yeah. to your work because there's so many amazingly great things that you could do with this idea. Yeah, definitely. I'm def I definitely want to grow with this, um, yeah. with the metal. I love working with metal anyway, so um, having it properly, you know, welded. And he is a, a welding engineer, yeah. so yeah. You know, He's he done can, a great job. And too. he does it that little bit eclectic sort of feel to it. So it's not just, you know, it's not perfect and it's not, yeah. it just gives it that little bit of a rough sort of feel to it great, too. Great idea. So it's mesh is see-through too. That was very important to me that I had it transparent like that. Well, not completely transparent, but with the, with the mesh because I like that, that sort of ability to see behind it as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a bit of bit more burnt umber into the wings, just twisting it a bit just to give it a bit of thickness at the top here. Yep. And then thinning it out. Voila. Well, that's done there. We might move onto the eyes and just put a bit of a, a layer there on the eyes. So we lay it on quite thick. Once that eyeball comes onto it, it'll just really stand out there. So I don't mind laying it really thick in there. Yeah, it's plenty thick, all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it gets thicker as we go. I can see the enthusiasm on your face. <laughs> I <laughs> love this scoop bit. Scoop that paint out of there. It's all the decorating bits now. Yeah. This is the fun bit. So how would you actually describe your work? I mean, where would you fit it into? Are you an abstract artist, expressionist? Yeah, a lot of people have, have called it that. I, I just look at it as fun. I try not to to label it too much because it's just constantly changing as well. But I'd, I'd just, yeah, I'd say abstract. It's just fun. <laughs> I can see you enjoy it. <laughs> I do. One lady once um, said to me in the staff room that um, when I showed her pictures of what I do, she said to me, it looks like you just play all day. And I said, that's exactly what I do. That's probably the best description I've had explained what I, what I actually do for work. Can't beat that. No, that's it. So I'm just going to put a bit of um, Matisse iridescent medium on this, on the wings, just to give it a bit of a glow. I love this stuff. So it's an iridescent medium? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just glows in the sunlight. Is it something that we generally, you would mix or just put it down as it, as it well, is? Usually I'll, I'll um, throw in a bit of, I'll show you. 
Usually I'll throw in a little bit of green in there. Yeah. Just up here on these ends here. I just like that little bit of a green glow in there. Just gives it a bit of a, finishes it off nicely, I think. Okay, so finish with the iridescent and we'll pop this on the floor. Graham, can you give me a hand? I can give you a hand, my dear. Thank you. Pop it down here. Okay, pop it. Pop it. Okay, there you go. Maybe it will pop it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Step out of the way. I might actually put the so, tail on now. So how do you actually stick those on? So get something like a, maybe an impasto medium might be a better option. I find this sticks quite well. So just a Matisse I'm using here, impasto. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pretty much pasting it on there nice and thick. Yep. And you obviously have to leave that for a, a day or so. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you just slide off. Yeah. Yep. So I leave it nice and thick, paste it on, and then just pop it on the canvas where I need it. And that's the tail. Lovely. <laughs> Very good indeed. Now we'll get some colour on there. Okay, so I'm just going to um, use this Matisse metallic silver straight from the container. You just squeeze just, it straight out there? Yeah, straight out there, straight onto that line. Ooh. So one of the um, paintings on the back of the wall here is called Red is Black. Mm -hmm. um, and actually all of the red tendrils that you've got there mm -hmm. are made out of upcycled mandarin bags. <laughs> it is. I don't look at anything really as waste. I can use anything. Nothing goes to waste in your hands? No, it doesn't. Well, most things don't, yeah. <laughs> So that's what I like about your work and your attitude. You're not afraid. <laughs> no, definitely not. Most people are just, they, just, they wince and they go, I can't do that. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. So there's a lot of prep work that goes into it. You know, it's not just a matter of um, just painting it on the spot like this. Obviously I've done all the, the pre-prep work with the um, signature and the little pieces that I add in there, but it all comes together. So we're gonna go over to the eyes now and put on some of the accessories, my favorite part. And um, I thought I'd just show you how I, how I make it. This one I made just with um, a pancake ladle because of that, that dome shape, I thought it was perfect for an eye. Um, and so what I did first was laid the uh, resin inside there. Um, I used the diggers one, you can get them at Bunnings or any of those sort of hardware shops and put the resin in there. Then I just pop all the little accessories that I want to do in there and then the iridescent material on top, put it in the sun and can be from anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour. If it's touch dry, you know it's ready and you can pop it out. It was a little bit difficult with this one because it's not it's not like these ones, which are rubbery and you can move them in and out. They're silicon ones, silicon moulds. But these ones, yeah, they pop out after a while of pressing on it. And it's pretty much ready to go now. So we can put that straight on there because these ones have been done. Okay, so what I've done is I've put some impasto medium with some fluorescent green, just to give it a bit more colour because it can never do with enough colour. So I'll mix that in. So this is the tricky bit. What I do is make a dome with it. Okay. That should do it. So now. The fun part. The fun part, and you can move it around. So, so pop it straight onto the canvas, like that. And then I just like to push on it. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> and it just sinks it right in Giant there. Giant bug eyes. <laughs> That's great. So I just do Giant the other one. Bug eyes. And boof. And that's the beginning of the eyes because then I really like to get in there with lots of colour and mix it up. So now I'm just going to dribble this green through. So I'm just going to put my signature, which I always do in resin. In this case, I put some fridge magnets of the DMR. Yeah, what I like is that the signature is actually part of the art, it's just not a signature, mm -hmm. it's, it's the artistic essence itself. Yes, yep. So I think we'll put the electrical sure. wiring on there now. So this one's not going to have as much, but we'll move it around there. <laughs> there is a lot in there though. And I can see that you've picked up a whole bunch more little bric-a-brac and bits and pieces. Yeah, just little bits from torches and clocks and stuff like that. So you just sort of throw that in there? Throw them on there. 
And Little fuse. This is going to be his front teeth. Oh, God. <laughs> This is like a, a grill from my husband's business. It's, he does the shakers for the boards. And uh, so these little bits and pieces are awesome little teeth mm -hmm. that I do. Um, and that's actually off the shaker, is it? Yeah, it's from the grill of the shaker. Yeah. And I just place it in there. <laughs> and they that. glisten. They, that's what I like about them. They kind of glisten. That's fantastic. And it's, and it's recycling. <laughs> Watching your work is a lot of fun too. I can see why people would enjoy doing workshops with you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's it, just got to let, it, let everything go and just have fun. So, if somebody wants to come and talk to you about a particularly corporate side of stuff, because you do some fantastic corporate pieces, mm -hmm. they can come to dmrartstudio.com. Mm -hmm. And you also work quite closely with kids as well, and you've got a Facebook page for them, which is DMR Art Studio Kids. Now, yeah. can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, I started DMR Art Studio as my business. But then I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about um, expanding it and making it more children friendly as well. Because I get so many parents that will send me photos of what their kids do. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's really good esteem for the kids to see that people really enjoy their work. So if they put it up on the DMR Art Studio kids page without any pictures of the children themselves, just the picture of their work. Um, you know, they get a little bit of esteem when somebody's liking their picture, you know, and mm. I just think it's, that's a very important part of it, you know, if they, can, if they can share their work at a young age and it can give them esteem for what they're, you know, they could be potentially finding their own path um, in the future and so it's something that, you know, will give them esteem at a young age, that's, that's the way I look at it, it's really mm. quite Fant forward, yeah. Fantastic, and art's a great way to do that too. Yeah. Okay, fantastic day, guys. Donna? Graham? Pleasure, absolute was, pleasure. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, and your yeah. work is based on fun. But also there's a serious message in there as well, and it's obviously about making a social statement, mm -hmm. which is really important. It's about our environment, how we look after it, what we put into the environment, but also how you upcycle everything as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Really yeah. important. It was really so well done. So much things we can use. Now, uh, two important things. Your website? DMRArtStudio.com. And also for the kids, which, which is DMR Art Studio. Facebook page, yep, DMR Art Studio and kids, yeah. Excellent, yeah, and just sort of go in there and then, and then help Donna out with what she's doing for kids. I think that's extremely important as well. Yeah. Um, also, colourinyourlife.com.au. Uh, don't forget, we've got uh, great, great, great seasons coming up, so make sure you get your DVDs, come in and see us about that. Also, our YouTube site as well, mm -hmm. and Facebook as well. Lots of people in there these days. Uh, it's been a pleasure, lots of fun, lots of colour, still a serious message behind what the show is about today. And as we always say, remember, till we see you again, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you guys. Bye see now. See you later. Bye.